she has a choice, but she doesn't realize what her choices really are when, when this all starts to unravel. Okay. I can't wait for people to read the book because it's really fascinating. Okay. Let's talk about Selena Montgomery. Uh, your first book was published when you were a student at Yale Law. Uh, that's when you first used the uh, pseudonym um, uh, Selena Montgomery. Uh, where, where, am I, did I read correctly that you got that from Bewitched? So I was, I wrote, I wrote, well, Just to Sleeps, I'm sorry, I wrote Rules of Engagement, my first book while I was in law school at the exact same time I was writing my uh, master's thesis slash a treatise on the operational dissonance of the unrelated business income tax. I Lots had two topics, right? Just, yeah. Um, <laughs> chemical physicist who falls in love with the man whose best friend she killed and Sorry. whether or not you can make money as a charity. Anyway, so I'm writing these two things and I was lucky enough to get both published. But when I knew the romance novel was coming out, part of the challenge was Google was now a thing. Yes. If you put my name in, and this is just by way of example, what comes up or when what came up back in you know 2000 was that I'd written this article on Mesopotamian astronomy for the Journal of the Astronomical Society of the Atlantic for Georgia State. Anyway, all of which is to say, it became very clear to me that anything I wrote would be searchable and findable. Yes. And no one was going to want to read a romance novel by Alan Greenspan on tax policy. <laughs> and so I was watching Bewitched at two in the morning. I owed my agent, I mean, my editor, a pseudonym. She needed to know what the name was on the book. And Elizabeth Montgomery, the A&E biography was about her. And I was like, I always loved Bewitch. And her evil care, her evil cousin, Samantha's evil cousin on the show, the dark haired one, her name was Serena. And I was thinking I, if I had to sign a book, I hate my R's, but I love my L's. And okay. so Serena became Selena, Selena Montgomery. Selena Montgomery. All right. So we got some pictures of Selena oh, Montgomery. Yeah. Okay. Can we show them? Jenny, um, so a, a, a friend yeah. of mine, one of your fellow uh, authors is in the audience, uh, Victoria Christopher Murray, fantastic author. She was on this book, this bus tour with you a decade ago. So some of her author friends sent her these pictures. That's you. Just sit, that's Selena Montgomery. So would you say, hi, I'm Selena Montgomery. I did. I did. No one else cared. They didn't care who Stacey Abrams was. I was Selena Montgomery. We were going through the Midwest. I think we were in Indiana at a Walmart uh, for this tour. And that's, that's me. And that's great. So you guys were taking the bus mm -hmm. around going from tour going from spot to spot to spot to sign your books yes and all of the authors like uh, uh victoria said all of the authors just knew you by selena montgomery they did not know stacy abrams there was no reason to care <laughs> <laughs> okay I, mean, I was in the state legislature i i yes. the following year i would become the democratic leader but i was selena that was my job that was, selena. I was. That was selena. why the romance genre I actually wanted to write a, a espionage novel. So it mm. was based on, we were very good friends still. Uh, my ex-boyfriend's dissertation was on, he's a chemical physicist and his dissertation was on this chemical called microzeolites. And I became fascinated. I read his dissertation and got really fascinated by the concept and decided to make it do all kinds of crazy things. He was like, it can't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. We disagreed. So I wrote, I was gonna write this, this novel based on this technology that could be used for terrorism, uh, for chemical weapons. And when I tried to pitch it to some, I talked to friends in law school who'd been in publishing, they uniformly said, publishers will not publish a spy novel by or about a woman and certainly not a black woman. And this is 99. And so I thought, okay, fine. If I make my spies fall in love, I bet you I can get it done. And so I killed all the people I planned to kill, did all the, 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 the suspense I wanted, but I made them fall in love and I fell in love with writing romance. I'd always loved reading it. Yes. But this gave me a chance to fall in love with writing it. And you went on to write eight, eight romance mm -hmm. novels. And what is the key to a good romance novel? So one of the tropes used against romance is that you know that it's a happily ever after story. Yes. But the art of writing romance is making it so fresh and new that you care about the journey you know the destination the best romance novels make the journey so unforgettable that you trust that the characters are going to get there 
but you worry about them the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the tension. That's the beauty. That's also the artistry of it. And, you know, I write romantic suspense. There are others who are more traditional romance and you have all of these substrates, but no matter where you fall in the romance universe, your job is to make every single story feel brand new and feel completely familiar. And when did you really develop your love for writing? I know that your mom was a librarian, right? So my mom was a librarian when I was growing up. So until, until they were 40, so my, my mom was a librarian and my dad was a shipyard worker. My mother just steeped us in reading and a love of reading. I literally used to sleep in the stacks in the back of the library surrounded by books. And then our father, he's this amazing storyteller. My dad is dyslexic. So reading was difficult, but he still loved storytelling. And together they really in, imbued in all of us, I've got five brothers and sisters, this deep love of not only the written word, but the capacity to capture the imagination and storytelling. And once I learned to write, I never stopped. Um, and I also